this today is um, in the space in which myself and my team work, we work with coaches, um, e-course creators and online business owners to, I guess, um, you know, explode their business into the marketplace via content marketing. Um, a part of that is that we work with a lot of business owners with their product and with their latest service, whether that be a free offering, whether that be the doors opening, um, you know, for their membership or their course or their program. Uh, and because we work with those people, um, I also talk to lots of people who are unsuccessfully launching and finding the whole thing really, really frustrating. I'm thinking that it's them and it's their mindset and they're manifesting it um, and just other lots of reasons, right? So I wanted to, I guess, jump on today and spend a few minutes having a bit of a chat about this um, because I feel like I'm an expert in failing and I want to be able to help you avoid some of those same frustrations uh, that I went on on that journey, which then led to to successful launches uh, as well as you know working with a range of different clients now to successfully achieve their uh, goals as well when they are launching so it's not often but I've even written some notes here so that I stay on topic and I deliver you exactly step by step my learnings like you know this is just a it's a really um, powerful topic and it's something I think I'm going to bang on about a bit more um, because I, yeah, like I said, I, I know how frustrating it can be. And there were some really key lessons that I learned through my journey and I still learn through my journey and I work with my clients on, on their journey, um, to be able to help them successfully help more people. So first and foremost, I guess what I learned, um, I'm going to talk about the 68 failed Facebook ads first, and then the actual launches going into it, because I kind of feel like that makes sense. So when I went, when I failed so many times at launching Facebook ads, I was quite new into business. Um, I had invested a lot of money to learn Facebook ads. Um, but the fundamental key thing was that paid advertising, it wasn't that paid advertising didn't work, right? I wasn't just throwing money into something uh, and getting frustrated going, this is never going to work for me. Um, I was the creator of the ads that went out there. And I guess along that journey, what um, the key lesson was, every time I launched a new lead magnet or a new uh, offering, my, my marketing got more and more defined talking to my client's biggest problem. Now, what I see a lot happening is that a lot of people you know, they are still like as much as we talk about having a niche market and making sure you've got a really firm client avatar and, you know, specific target audience, there are still a lot of people out there who really struggle to define that. One, because they want, they can, and they potentially want to help many people. Um, being there, ticked that box. I thought I was going to save the world with a million different offerings and I was so excited. But what happens when we don't define who it is that we want to talk to and we've got lots of people, it can become quite a mixed message to our target audience. So if every single day I'm talking about, you know, career, um, finding, you know, the career that you're passionate about, you know, that you it's your purposeful career, and then all of a sudden I flip and I start talking about how having an unfulfilling career um, could be the reason why you know you're gaining weight and here's how to lose it they become quite mixed messages like they're not like although you might be talking to the same person the same person doesn't necessarily realize it's still them because to that person their number one problem is that they've got a job they don't love they don't know what they want to do and they don't know how you know they maybe they've been in that job for I don't know 20 years and they're really scared to go out there and apply for new things for failure and, you know, and all the other things that kind of go on in their head. So once you decide, like my biggest suggestion is to look at your current clients and who do you love working with the most? Like, you know, what really excites you, what brings you a lot of joy 
and then look at the problems that you've helped solve with them and then look at fundamentally create an avatar of that person and then look at the others and see what is their common similarities and their big problem that you've been helping them through. Um, I can guarantee that the big problem will be present for multiple, if not all, of those same clients that you love working with. So it is crucial that you create a freebie, a service offering, a program, an e-course that must solve your client's biggest problem. And it's not necessarily what you think their biggest problem is. This comes through a lot of research, a lot of failure, a lot of redefining. Um, and something that really helped me was doing some market research, literally talking to people on Zoom. I asked everyone the same question, and then at the end, I recorded them. At the end, I listened back to the recording and I transcribed it. And then I got out a highlighter and I highlighted all of the same things that these people were saying. It was not a coincidence that the people were saying the same thing. That was what their biggest problem was. And then therefore I was able to create content for that problem and use their own language to be able to market it so that it became really identifiable to that person that the, what I was offering was suitable for them. So um, so please really spend some time. This is the, I think this is one of the toughest parts of our business, especially in the online world, is defining who it is that you're going to help and then you can go on to be able to create lots of amazing things to be able to help them. Um, that's really probably the biggest reason why I failed so many times when it came to marketing campaigns. Uh, I was just throwing stuff out there, hoping it would stick, and then eventually it helped me get really super clear with who I was talking to and defining the person that I wanted to be able to help. Now, when it comes to failed launches and successful launches, that is still step one, research, right? So a lot of people who start programs or e-courses have got a one-on-one -on -one, you know, type of coaching or consulting business already. And they've decided that they want to go on to be able to help that one-to-many model, um, you know, where you can teach and train um, but through recorded trainings as opposed to you doing it all the time. So your recordings do the heavy lifting and that gives you the opportunity to be able to, uh, I guess, you know, support and guide and mentor uh, and coach your clients more with what comes up outside of that training. So... Again, you need to know what your client's biggest problem is. In the one-on-one -on -one space, it could be that you're helping people with a variety of problems. And if that's true, look at the problem that you love helping with the most and that your work can help support. And again, when you have defined that, do some market research, go into a Facebook group or put it on your Facebook page. I'm looking for X amount of people with this specific problem to have a chat with me um, for some market research, for something, you know, for a new program I'm launching. And in return, I'll offer you half an hour of um, Q&A time and you can ask me whatever you want about the problem or, you know, whatever it is that these people are going through. Uh, I did this with, I think I said about eight or 10 people and it was just gold. And it was really fundamentally for me, one of the biggest changes in going from launching two years of failed memberships and programs to booking out two successful launches because I finally knew how to communicate and what my ideal client were wanting. The program was great. I guess didn't, I wasn't marketing it and I wasn't talking about it in the way that my ideal client or student was understanding and it just required a linguistic shift uh, to be able to be in alignment with what that person's needs and wants were and problem, not the way that I would articulate it. Um, secondly, you really have to know your numbers. Like so many people go into a launch setting really big goals or even if it's a webinar, right? Your first webinar um, and you want 50 people. And look, I'm all about setting really big, juicy, hairy, scary goals, uh, but you have to be able to make sure that they're realistic um, and you have to understand the numbers behind reaching the outcomes that you want. So for example, high level, if you run an e-commerce business, you need to try drive a lot of traffic to that business, um, to your website, because 
2% of the people that go to your website are likely to convert. When it comes to e-programs and e-courses and you're doing a launch, 3% on average are likely to convert, right? So when you look, and that's not 3% of your current database, each database or each platform you've got an audience on, that doesn't necessarily make up one whole people because not everyone sees your post and not everyone in your database reads your emails, right? So there's a whole formula which I'm going to put into a blog for March that will break this down because it's um, okay, it will take us a very long time and this is not meant to be an hour long public, you know, TED Talk Live. Um, but, you know, you really need to understand how many people you are wanting, um, you know, your goal, you need to understand the numbers in terms of your conversion, and then you need to look at the numbers and all of the different platforms for your audience and how many people out of your audience are likely to convert, etc. And as I said, stay tuned for March. I think the 1st of March that blog is due out. If you want it, comment down below and I'll send it to you first. Um, just put blog and I'll send it to you once it's been published. Now, the third one of the third mistakes and things to learn from is creating a marketing plan that is more just post, like it's more than just posting on social media. So a lot of people think that, oh, it's cool. I've got 1,500 followers. I'm just going to mark it on my Facebook and Instagram and my TikTok page. Like social media marketing is one tiny bit of the cog in terms of the master plan of all the different ways that we can market and reach uh, new people uh, and be able to grow our audiences for successful, you know, launches and offerings in the future. So other ways that you can be thinking about other than posting on your news feed, stories, email marketing, ask your network to share, go into Facebook groups if you're allowed to self-promote, you know, change your Facebook business and personal page banner, Google marketing, Facebook ads if you have an allocated budget. Um, you know, selling anything is a numbers game. And in this situation, the more eyeballs on your launch, the more opportunity you have to gain new followers, new e email subscribers, and new sales. So don't just think that social media marketing is the be or end all because I can tell you right now it absolutely isn't. Um, email marketing is something that I encourage anyone to be focusing on if you're not already. Uh, statistically, more people see that content, more people convert over time, and then we use the other platforms to be able to encourage people into our email database. Again, a different topic. Now, the fourth thing to think about to make sure that you have a successful launch uh, is your marketing plan must align with your target audience using their voice so that when they read the content, they feel seen. As I said, this is one of the biggest reasons why I had 68 failed ad campaigns and at least two years of product launches, which was about six all up. So, um, you know, do your market research, read in groups how people are writing and then communicate back to them. And lastly, celebrate everything, right? When I was going through this journey, gosh, I had so many tantrums and tears and I wanted to give up and it was just really, really hard and frustrating. Um, and what I guess, you know, changed a little bit in my mindset was that every single time I failed, I celebrated because it meant I was one step closer to being able to do something more successfully. You know, a launch in itself is already a huge success regardless of the outcome. And you're going to learn so much more than what you did before. Um, the same when you put like a new freebie out there. Sometimes that's really scary. Um, you know, you're putting something out into the audience that people may not like and um, that's okay. You just learned that that's not solving their biggest problem enough to get their email address. So set yourself a goal, detach from the outcome by knowing the numbers, celebrate new followers, new email subscribers, even if they don't turn into sales straight away. At the end of the day, they're interested in what you do and they want to get to know more about you and your offering and your service more. So those people that come into the funnel now, they may take longer. Some of them may convert instantly. Others are going to be more of a long-term thing. And that's why we need to keep consistently um, putting offers and launches out there. And fill, so one, keep filling the funnel and then consistently doing the work so that people 
can turn from um, you know, new people into low hanging fruit into paying customers and clients. So that is everything. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you.